Good to have you back. Thank you very much. How was your trip? It was lovely. Thank you so much. Cool. It's really, really good to be back. I missed you guys. Yeah, well, we really missed you too. So, Aww. but you're a big tea fan, right? I am a big tea fan. So we brought you back on the perfect episode. Very much so. And speaking mm -hmm. of traveling, Tealit have been doing traveling of them of, by themselves as well. Um, they've been doing the amazing tea race, which mm -hmm. is exploring lots of different tea growing regions around the world. So I have. Michael and Elise here to talk about that amazing adventure that they went on. Yeah, we um, we uh, run an online farmers market for tea. It's mm -hmm. uh, tealet.com, and uh, we work with independent tea growers around the world. And um, the the season of when uh, the fresh tea is coming to market is uh, spring. Like uh, the the warmer weather comes out, the fresh new tea comes out, and that is like the most prized tea um, in the market. And so. Um, it was uh, traditioned that um, the uh, the clipper ships uh, ships uh, coming from China to to London would have races to who who got the tea back the first and they got the highest price in the market. So awesome. kind of played on that. Um, we went to seven different countries, fourteen different growing regions, and uh, met with all these really amazing farmers. We were there with them as they were harvesting that tea, processing the tea, and um, uh, capturing all kinds of videos and photos and stories. And now we come back. We're sharing those stories, and then we're also uh, doing commerce for them. So we do logistics, uh, payments, and uh, marketing for them so that they can directly connect with buyers um, internationally. That's really cool. Yeah. And I hear that the media has that you've been uploading to the internet has kind of been taking Reddit by storm and all sorts of that, that those kind of things. So. Yes, I mean, uh, I mean, all, all the farmers have their own sort of uh, unique uh, personalities and character. <laughs> And uh, in each situation we were in, you know, being so so quick, had its own dynamic and sort of pressures on where we need to be at uh, weather and just just really uh, time. So, you know, definitely captured a lot of um, just sort of uh, surprising, you know, sporadic and um, a lot of uh, also uh, the the culture. You know, that was one thing that we mm -hmm. went through and asked them. It was like, please take us to your village, take us through your town. Uh, we want to capture. We want to capture that. That's because so cool. That's sort of part yeah. of the storytelling yeah. of of sort of connecting the uh, consumer with where their sort of tea is coming from, where yeah. it's being well, produced, some and, of those how it's, and how it's being produced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So by doing that, you know, sort of like telling them, like, I want, I want to go to see how how do you prepare like you know your sort of organic fertilizer to you know feed your plants. Like, show me unique processes and like you know those those were the, the farmers where you know like that we're looking for is like farmers that have a passion mm -hmm. on what they're on what they're doing and you know it's more like just small um you know small quantity high you know, like high quality you know and that's those are the really unique you know uh teas that we're we're, we're out uh, sourcing that's really cool that you get to yeah. share that story and educate like what was your favorite region that you went to elise um definitely nepal just the spirit of the people, just awesome. These guys are like always dancing. Like we were, <laughs> we have like 30 minutes of footage of us and like 12 people inside like a little Jeep dancing to music. Yeah. Just like so time Bonnie, to time Bonnie, of our Bonnie, life. That's, I, just trust me, there's gonna be something coming out. And it's yeah. gonna be a new hype thing. We're making a lot of fun videos. I mean, we captured like two hours of us dancing around a bonfire. Like wow. we were processing tea all night and dancing and eating really great food. And um, people really cared about each other. Like there was some other regions, there was some like interesting politics to say the least. Um, <laughs> and people were just making decisions that really weren't thinking about everybody else. Um, you know, and that's us too. We have to be cautious of when we get into those kind of business partnerships. And But in Nepal, I felt like everybody was just so like free, so open. Um, like we're from Hawaii, it's like the, the Aloha spirit. It's like you open your heart to people and that's how you do business. That's how you oh, that's build cool. relationships and that's how Nepal was. And um, beautiful countryside. I got a ride on a, a motorbike huh. with the farmer for like two hours Aww. through the mountains of the, the Himalayas. Just You got the local tour. That's yeah, awesome. yeah, it was great. Cool. It was fantastic. So what's the video that you brought us today? Yeah, so in particular, you've yeah. been kind of sharing some humorous sides yeah. of tea growing as well. Yeah, right? well, like we said, we optimize it for Reddit, so it's all like <laughs> meme friendly. Like we sell most of our product through Bitcoin and so we're, we're like really trying to optimize to that, that audience. And so um, almost getting to like YouTube celebrity, you know, status. <laughs> Famous and yeah. yeah, so there's two growers in particular, they're good friends, but um, I felt like on this trip when we went to go visit them, one in Taiwan and one in Japan, they were like in competition with each other. And so they asked us to make this video of them 
kind of, you know, clashing together and, and competing with each other. And um, we're here drinking tonight, so this is a tea drunk. It's a representation <laughs> of what it's like to get tea drunk with yes. Aki and Alfredo. All right, let's okay. roll the video. Yeah. Our next guest is an ex-Hollywood executive that worked with New Line Cinema and Paramount Pictures. She's the co-founder of Milk and Honey, which allows you to create your perfect pair of high-end shoes, and now is the new co-founder of a new company called Wade and Bell, which is dedicated to eliminating the, the muffin top. Well put. If you guys know where I'm grabbing. And then uh, you're going to do that by providing the most comfortable women's tights yes, sir. in the world, in the universe, Absolutely. in the holographic universe. Multiverse. So please put your hands together for Dorian Howard. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Ooh. Let a little bit of the nerd slip out there. A little bit. So, oh, but I heard you have some nerd in you too. So you are either born with the ability, or somehow you or learned at a very young age to read everything backwards. Yeah, I don't know. I think I was born with it because it's nothing I ever figured out. How to, I never learned how to yeah. do it. Just. One day I realized that I can speak backwards. Yeah, 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 not just reads. Yeah, and it's weird. Do you do it? Well, what do you want me to say? <laughs> just, you, you, can, you, can tar you can either start speaking and, or I can, I can do the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, yeah, yeah, start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I del pignalia uta galfo detnu itats for karima, dena uta kobapper rofa katuiti denats, ino noiten, renu dog, ebelzivini, hutu yitrubul, dena ikitsaj rofla. Anybody verify that? Okay, so. But, hey, Papa, will you grab, will you grab the, uh, the drinking song? I'm going to see if she can read that thing. Can you sing it? No. <laughs> can you sing back? Yeah, can you do the... the I can't thing? sing forwards, Okay, but but I can... at least this way we can verify. Okay. Who knows what okay, that is. So that Pledge of Allegiance thing, that could have been it. It, it could have been, I think. So just, just to explain how I do it, it's the right order, but each individual word is flipped. Oh, okay, so and you're, you're going to through our ups, but each one will be okay. Exactly. Gotcha, so, Higurot, Ruray, Spu, Dena, Nuad, Ireta, Denuar, Dena, Ganis, and Ganikner, Ganos, Tisaot, Ot, Isot, Iu, Evil, Et, Tisom, Nia, Ikap, or Iwa, E, Ganoleb, Srik. Yeah, it's true. It actually works. Amazing. It's the one talent I have. It's like my one skill, and it doesn't really translate to much of anything. Although every once in a great while, someone will say, "Like, can you do Come anything weird?" Come on my weird? show, that we drink beers yeah. in our it's living room. It's a podcast. Room, and, like, we drink we need... PBR. Can, yeah. What can you do? I was like, ah, I can speak backwards. All right. Wow, that is that is amazing. Okay, so we'll try to get a little serious. So we have an entrepreneurial crowd. A lot of people awesome. are kind of in that sub five hundred thousand dollars sort of new entrepreneur, which is where yeah. you've been in the, their shoes a couple times yep. now. But I wanted to talk Literally about Literally and figuratively. Oh yeah, that's right. Figuratively <laughs> also. Shoes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but I the, like um, shoe puns, sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Yo, you you are probably the master at shoe puns. Pretty so good. you've gotta you gotta lay them out for me because I might miss. Yeah. Good one. Double good one. Two X. Okay, so twenty eight thousand misprinted Shoe boxes early in your career? Can you tell me about this story? Uh, not early in my career, like six months ago. Oh, um, so sorry. when we launched Milk and Honey, there are a bunch of things that we did right and a bunch of things we did wrong. When we launched Wade and Bell, we decided let's really be better about how we're doing things and go by the numbers a little bit more. With, with our first startup, you're just like, woohoo, we have a startup. Let's just go do things and go do things. And then you're launching, you're doing product, you're trying to get, and then you take a step back and think, oh, I made a bunch of mistakes along the way. So the good thing about a second startup is you like to try and correct a lot of those mistakes. Right, right. 
So when we launched our second startup, we were super excited. 28 Bedford Street was the apartment that my sister and I lived in, in New York City, our first apartment. We grew up in New Jersey, always dreamed of moving to New York City when we grew up, and this was a really, really incredible place for us. In truth, it was a total shithole. Can I say that on a podcast? Oh yeah, no, It was a total it. shithole, um, but we loved it. So when we were coming up with our new company, we thought 28 Bedford would be an amazing name. So we get the URL, we get all our social tags, and call our attorney, because now I know to do things like this, and say, hey, how does a trademark look? And he goes, let me do a quick search. OK, great, trademark looks OK. I will now do the deep dive. I just like stopped at trademark looks great. So we oh. were about to launch a deal on Living Social, which is, you know, it, it goes out to 4 million women. And um, 48 hours before that, so of course we go to the printers. 10,000 packages printed up, 28 Bedford. We're super psyched, logo looks great, packaging's amazing. And our lawyer calls us up and says, by the way, you'll never get that trademark. There's a company called 25 Bedford that does e-commerce. Mm. So mm. you had it, did you just like gasp for me? You did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was that, that's what I did. So it, it's, um, it's this moment where you think, I have $16,000 worth of merch in my garage with a name that I can't use. And we're going live in 48 hours. So it was um, a little bit of chaos and a whole lot of panic. And then you just have to, you just have to do what you can do, which is come up with a new name really freaking fast and get some packaging printed up. But we're a startup. I, I certainly don't have the budget right, to, what do you re do? You, what do, you do? Yeah. you get stickers printed up and you slap them on. Okay. <laughs> and that's what you do. And is it great? No. Is it what I want my customers to experience the first time they order a pair of weight and bell tights? Absolutely not. But it is what it is. And that, so we've had to, you know, we do print up, we, we did print up a few, we print up a thousand. So 10% of them will have the proper packaging and 90% yeah. will have a sticker on it. And I just think that that's so it goes. You know, stuff happens and you have to make so the you best So you kept been talking about a philosophy here of just like getting it done no matter what, right? Oh, that's absolutely. The, I mean, yeah. that's Startup 101, right? You don't have the choice. I don't work for, a, you know, I don't work for Macy's that could say, oh, let's just print up, you know, $16,000, drop in the bucket. I'm like, holy shit, $16,000. Like yeah. You know, you just have to, you have to, Understand what went wrong, right? Okay, so next time I do this, I'm going to get my trademark legit for sure before I print anything up. So I'm going to slow down a little bit. But then, okay, great, lesson learned. But now I have this problem. So you just have to go with it. You have to lighten up a little bit and just hope that your audience is going to be okay with it. Okay, so even if you're pushing really fast and you're trying to make these decisions that just kind of hustle, like where do you think that you can cut corners and like where do you think that like you can't? Like where should people focus their energy? So it's important to move fast. I don't want to take anything away from that. I think that the worst thing a startup can do is move slowly, right? Because someone will come out sooner, someone will come out better, people get bored, do every, fail fast, work fast, everything fast. However, um, and, and, and scrappiness, right? Scrappiness is key. That's how you can get a company off the ground, but two areas where I think, having learned the hard way, um, that really makes sense to spend money is in accounting. Get someone to do your books from the beginning. Mm. Um, the, if they don't make sense from the time you launch to think about getting audited, which we did this year, and they say like, hey, you know, get your last three years of accounting and all your sales and all your taxes and all your customers, and it's, it's terrible. Um, but if your accounting is set up properly, it's actually printing out three different things and you're okay. So accounting, definitely pay for and legal. I think getting your company structured properly, getting the partnership agreements with you and your co-founders, whether you end up raising venture money or not, these are all things that are really important. And it's not because my, you know, my co-founder is my sister, right? There's no one on the planet I trust more than my sister. However, you still need to be legally protected because she could marry a crazy person and then legally he owns half my company and then they get divorced and he owns 25% of my company because he owns, you know, so all these things. You think she's going to marry a crazy person? Well, she is married now and he's definitely not okay, crazy. Okay. <laughs> but she wasn't okay, when, we, when we started yeah. the company. So she could have married a crazy yeah, I mean, she she's could got have. a sketchy dating history. Okay. It could have gone south. <laughs> But it did it, and well, that's so okay. <laughs> getting all your ducks in a row, I think, legally is really important. And so what made her dating history so sketchy? Oh. Well, well, we're from I'm New Jersey. Kidding. I'm just kidding. We don't answer that one. That's not a real question. Okay, so difference between raising money and doing it yourself, because you've been through two companies now. Yep. One time you decided to raise money, one time mm -hmm. you decided to kind of keep it in your, yes. your own thing. Tell me the difference, especially for people who are balancing this out, what they should be looking for, what did you learn from it? I believe that if you absolutely absolutely can do you should do anything you possibly can short of like 
putting your house up against your company, um, other than raising money. Raising money is really important in certain situations. Um, I don't necessarily know if it was the right decision for us, but it is, it gets you, it, you play at a different level, you answer to different people, your priorities shift a little bit, because all of a sudden, instead of be building a solid, a solid foundation for your company and building a company that scales and that has true profit, all you care about in the fundraising cycle is top line revenue, right? Because what you do is you raise your seed round and then you're on this, the minute that first check gets in the bank, you're on this incredible sprint to your series A. So unless you show incredible growth, people aren't gonna look at you mm, for your gotcha. A. Gotcha, so for these so, long-term things. Yeah, so the scary really thing is, is like there's a cliff, right? And you have to run as fast as you can so you have enough momentum to get to the other side. And if you get to the end, you can't stop because you're running as fast as you can so you're gonna fall. So it, you just can't, stop when you get in that fundraising circle and then it's that same thing when you get your A, you're like, okay, now we have to show crazy top line because then we have to get to our B and it turns into this, to this cycle that I think so many people lose sight of building a sound business that makes sense from a profit gotcha. standpoint. You know, being a profitable, you know, I don't think Warby Parker is profitable yet. You know, I don't know if, I don't know if Zappos was profitable when Amazon bought them. You know, it's, it's not the way Silicon Valley is set to think. I see what you're saying. Okay, so it's just so you have, yeah, it kind of comes down to control, I guess, right? Just knowing that you're comfortable with what the company is so it can have that long-term win. Right, and not feeling the outside pressure to grow at an unnatural speed. So okay. with Wade and Bell, what we're really trying to do is grow it thoughtfully. It's a, you know, it's a product with very nice margins, and you know, we can build it in a way that you sell a little bit, and then you spend a little bit to market it. It doesn't have to be lightning speed. Gotcha. I'm hoping. No, that's we'll true. See. Yeah, no, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you so much for coming. So we want to talk about a couple of places that they can follow you um, and learn more. So you have your Twitter account, which is Dorian Howard number one. Yes. First from Dorian number one Howard in the world. One. Dorian Howard one on Twitter. Then you also have milkandhoneyshoes.com, mm -hmm. and then your new one is wadeandbell.com. Yes. So um, you guys should check that out. And thank you so much for coming. Thanks and talk, for having me. Talking backwards and My uh, pleasure. giving us some advice. So thank you very much. All right. So no, oh yeah. No, before you go, we gotta we gotta sing you our famous drinking song. Oh yes. Yeah. So we're gonna finish, we're gonna sing you our famous drinking song for taking some time out. <laughs> to you. <gasps> Cups and downs we gather around and sing a drinking song. To toast to those we love the most, the place where we belong. And cheers. Cheers. Nice. <laughs>
Because women can do no wrong. This is true, and it would be deemed sexist. But you can bash on the guys all you want, so I'm changing that. I have a list of women bashing holidays I've been working on. So I will uh, share that with you maybe sometime soon. So we have Sam here. Sam Argier, let's hear it. That's right, yeah. yeah. Great yes. to be here. I'm happy that you're here. I'm happy to yes, be here. Yes, you have some brothers in the audience. There's Thank Mike you. and Paul. Can you raise your hands? Yeah. yeah. Paul's got a yeah. really big thumb. Really big thumb? Yeah, really big thumb. Are you guys jealous that he's up here with me and you're not? No, You're not, I okay, that. that's okay. I don't yeah. take any offense to They were that. happy to have me do it. Okay, good. Yeah. That's good to know. It's all good. So you guys are a third generation in Las Vegas real estate developers. That's right. Um, that's exciting. Yeah, my grandfather was in real estate. My dad is, who's here as well tonight. My oh, mom really? and dad. Oh, really? Your dad's yeah. here? Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. I like it. So, uh, yes, it's, uh, it. and crazy thing, you know, since we're downtown, my great uncle Joe named the Johnny Carson down the street. If you know the Johnny Carson... Hotel, so hotel. he did it. That's so yeah, right. I like it. So a family, lot of history. Yeah, a lot of history, and that's what we're all about. So uh, we wanted to work together, my brothers and I. We've been coming to downtown Fremont East, the Arts District, for the past ten years. And you guys are now having a new passion yes. project. It's called Urbanity. Urbanity does, apartments. Like, everyone with me in the count of three, just say Urbanity. It's so much fun. Urbanity. One, two, three. Urbanity. urbanity. Yes. It's Tell them fun. about this new passion project. Yeah, it's. Just a few blocks down, 11th yep. and Stewart, with eight units. And basically, we saw a need for housing in downtown. There's great high rises like here we're in the Ogden, there's the, uh, the Jewel, uh, Newport Lofts, but we understand that not everybody might be looking for a high density high rise. Maybe it, not, it might not fit into everybody's budget. So what we found is, a, is an older building built in 1948, wow. but we are renovating it and reusing the space to preserve the history of downtown Las Vegas and really make a killer place. We, we are renovating it. We're going to have a great community uh, area. And it's also a great location. It's four blocks away from Atomic Liquors. You can walk to everything downtown. Nice. So it's How all about... How fun is that? that fun. I tied it into the Martini Holiday, Atomic Liquors. So oh, it's all good. good. Maybe we should all go out afterwards to Atomic and get a Martini. I don't know. I'm just saying. Are you paying? So, um, uh, so you just mentioned community because yeah. yes. it's amazing. But you guys are also kind of um, expounding on that just within urbanity. Can you share? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and again, the sense of why we did this is, you know, we grew up in the 90s. Here. So I mean, I, it seemed like every hotel was being imploded. So we yes. wanted to do the opposite of that: is take a historic building and make it new again, and, mm -hmm. and totally revamp it and revitalize it. And yeah, the community aspect's great. It's a great layout. It's two uh, fourplexes, so there's four units in each building, and then there's a common area that we're going to have a gas grill in. We're going to have a bocce ball court, maybe even a big beer pong court. We're a lot, a lot of options, and uh, so it's a great place everyone can come together as a community, mm -hmm. socialize, bring their friends over, and we're going to be launching late August, early September. It's going to be a great kickoff party. We'll have beer, we'll have music, we'll have food. So come on down, Urbanity Apartments. And my, my friends at Banger Brewing are doing yeah. the beer. That's awesome. We're we'll getting so kegs good. from them. Yeah, Fresh, it's handcrafted beer. I love it. Well, thank you so much great for be being here. here. We are very thankful. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. That's all the time I got. Happy holidays! Yeah! yeah. Hey.